a little bit, uh, but mainly wanted to start with the fires. You know, what, what do you do in a fire and how do you determine if your horse is in a healthy range or non healthy range? And um, what do you do if they're not? And why does it affect horses more than some people? And really, the reason that it affects horses more than some people is the size of their lungs. Their lungs are huge. So they have a hard time pumping out any particles that go all the way into them. And so they would be put into the most sensitive category. So I have, for example, a horse, I wasn't even near the fire really in the sense that the air quality wasn't too bad. I mean, but every time I'd walk him, he'd just start coughing. He, I believe he's like me, he has an allergy to it. And so I kept it really light with him, just walking, just easy going. Uh, fortunately, it's the horse actually that I take over to uh, Tahoe Equine. And I say fortunately because he was able to exercise indoors there, which helps. Um, but anytime I exercised him outside, man, he was just like, he was just really struggling. And so you might ask yourself, you know, what can I do for my horse if I'm near a fire? Or if my horse is a sensitive horse or any horse, get them out, right? Get them out as quickly as you can. You know, and you don't out, really know. Out, you mean out of the area? Out of the area, yeah. yeah. Move, move them out of the area. Right. You know, I had a horse uh, about, I guess, it would be 17 years ago. I didn't think anything of it. I was driving her from Urington back to Sacramento with me. Urington's a little bit east of here in Nevada. And I was drive trailering through an area that had a fire. And, you know, I did the best that I could. I probably wasn't in the fire zone area for more than 30 minutes. I ended up treating that horse for two months for smoke inhalation. Because it just got into the trailer with her. It probably it didn't properly exit. Um, I, it's the only thing I can imagine. And fortunately she wasn't left with any lasting lung damage, but it was three times a day medication and just listening to that poor thing, just cough and cough and cough. And she didn't come off the trailer coughing. It was like the next day, mm -hmm. right? That it all showed up. It is just not very good for them. And so don't expose your horses to it. If you, if you need a trailer, go a different route. We all know that trailers can be rough on their lungs anyway, right? Because they don't have the best ventilation. Um, this one, I had the window down, screen open, and it had vents in the back, you know, pretty much what you could do. And it still wasn't enough for her. And so you really, really, really need to take care of that. There are some herbs herbal supplements, breathing supplements that you can uh, use out there. Fortunately for us, we didn't have to use an oxygenated, oxygenated mask for her. We had to treat her for pneumonia though, essentially, yeah. is what she ended up with. And, you know, so it was cough syrups constantly trying to, you know, get everything up. It was, we were giving an expectorant, obviously not a suppressant because we wanted to get stuff up have her cough it cough it out and uh anything we could do to help any sort of allergies that she might have so she didn't have post nasal drip on top of that is a big deal uh horses can end up as a roarer permanently mm -hmm. and uh you can hear it actually you know they they literally roar so it's not something to be taken lightly their lungs. Another thing that a lot of people don't think about that can really damage their lungs is exercising in extreme cold. And we, so for example, at our barn, we never exercise under 15 degrees. And one of the reasons is that the warm air comes in, comes in through the, well, the cold air comes in, excuse me. And 
it crystallizes, it can crystallize in their lungs. Like I said, they're really big. And when they crystallize, it can actually slice and scar the lung tissue. So to give you guys an idea of, of the size of a horse's lungs, a person exercising will be taking in four liters of air per second of exercise. A horse takes in the average of 64 to 72 liters of air per second when they're exerting themselves. So when you think about that and you think about that cold air crystallizing, bringing that much in, that's, that's where you get the problem. As well as with the fires, you know, and that smoke, there's soot, there's um, carbon monoxide, there's all, depending on what's burning, mm -hmm. will determine the actual hard physical particles that are in the air that we and them are inhaling. So if you're exercising your horse after a fire or, you know, if the, your area is smoky or even think about those horses in a fire that are trying to get to safety, like we had, what, last week? Was it last week? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it seems longer than that, huh? Mm -hmm. um, right. They were running to get out of the way. Well, they're inhaling 64 to 70, actually, it's 79 liters of air per second and all of that polluted air. So I, I really feel for our wild ones that were out in the midst of that. We had pictures, some of the photographers taking pictures of those guys out there running in that smoke. And you know, we're never gonna know how many of them are actually making it, how many mm -hmm. of them out there actually have pneumonia or COPD because of it. So I'm sorry, I just wanted to interrupt. No, back so no I think that's idea great. Of the size, yeah. the capacity that they take mm -hmm. in. No, I think that's great. And it's just, a, you know, it's a really important thing for people to understand. I know so many people don't know about the cold portion of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we'll just, you know, maybe if it's been a long period of time, we'll take them out and we'll walk them. Maybe do a light trot or something like that, but it's not worth permanent problems. I've heard of horses with permanent problems because of it, and it's just not worth it. Um, every state has an air pollution website that you can go to. Sorry, that's my two-year-old. And, and uh, you can type in your zip code and it will tell you what groups shouldn't be exercising that day. And it'll tell you what time of day they think it's gonna be worse or better. Um, I know when we had the rim fire here several years ago and I was in Yosemite and our ash was really bad, our air quality was horrible. Uh, we used that quite frequently to go, okay, we're gonna have this window. It's gonna be better in this window because the wind's gonna shift and send it the other direction. Hurry up, get everybody out. So um, that's something that I would really recommend that you guys do because you wouldn't be, sometimes you have no idea what areas are gonna get the smoke, right? I mean, here, we had the fire right here for several days and evidently Hawthorne and Lyon County had the worst of the smoke mm -hmm. and they're not close to here. They're almost two hours from here. But that's where it happened to settle. Mm -hmm. And so using those websites and using the professionals um, out there will really, really kind of give you an advantage on making a good decision on what you should do. I mean, granted, they don't know everything, but it is certainly helpful. And, you know, it's also just good common sense. If, you know, uh, if you, UC Davis has a really nice article on smoke and horses and what to watch out for and what to do. And, you know, they kind of say the rule of thumb is if you look out and you see a layer of smoke, mm -hmm. neither you nor your horse should be out there exercising. You know, they're out there living in it. That's one thing. But to get out there and really inflate those lungs, it's probably not necessary. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when you have horses that are stall confined and they, they don't do well on being confined for too long, well, then that, that's where listening, uh, going, referring to that channel that Kristen was talking about would be really benefit so that you can get them out there um, for whatever little moment to get some exercise and, and keep them minimally exposed to all that soot. 
Now, one of the things that we've noticed in our arena, and there's no scientific proof behind this, okay, is if we turn a sprinkler on and there, we can literally see the air clear up. And I'm assuming it's because it makes the air, uh, air particles heavier mm -hmm. and probably kind of acts like a rain. Mm -hmm. So you might think about, I don't know if misters would help something along those lines it makes sense to me that it would mm -hmm. uh, but that during that year of the rim fire we had a sprinkler going on in our arena almost all day and it really seemed to help we rode around the outside of it but the air just looked like you were talking about clearer in there and um our arena if people haven't seen it it's three-sided one side's open the side that's open doesn't get a lot of direct airflow inside but i thought that that was a really interesting uh, you know point that we had mm -hmm. i could walk around inside the arena and not get like ash on my glasses but if i went in the barn walk from one end barn to the other i would have soot on my glasses interesting so, yeah so i don't know yeah if that has to do with anything must have i mean well when you watch the sprinklers go you know like it's reflecting in the sunlight you can mm -hmm. see those mist rising right so when you have a, a covered arena three-sided mm -hmm. like you've got and that sprinkler's going it's going to rise that would make sense that's mm -hmm. that's a that's a great thing to know yeah. um, i've also had some really good luck with the hilton herbs their respiratory uh you know supplement i think that's a great one i've had some horses with allergies and um not necessarily smoke problems or cold but it just helps with uh lung support yeah uh cindy what it's great for heaves yeah yeah i actually um have used hilton herbs forever um and i i have a horse here who gets heaves and i give him that during this time of the year and it settles it right down and what's neat about the hilton herbs is that they're actually the herbs and most mm -hmm. horses that i've fed i've fed several different kinds of their blends and i have always been able to just offer it to my hands as my horses as long as they don't go you know like they want to smell mm -hmm. it or breathe out on it and it all goes okay. they'll normally just eat it right out of my hands so what were you going to ask me you're going to ask me something Oh yeah. Do, um, do you know anything about any essential oils, Cindy, that's good for? I like to use the peppermint and the eucalyptus, which mm -hmm. are really good. Um, cypress is another good one for the lungs. Okay. And um, thyme. That's one I haven't heard much about. Cypress. Yeah. That's interesting. Thyme. Those are all really good ones. Um, I like all of them. So you can use that. You can take a drop of oil and just rub it right, you know, let them smell it in each nostril as all, for as long as they want. Be sure that you cover the glass tip because sometimes they'll want to eat it, especially if you're offering peppermint. Mm -hmm. um, let them smell it in each nostril and then put a little bit on your hand, like two or three drops, rub your hands together and then rub it right down the middle of their nostril, you know, in between their nostrils so they can continue to inhale that. It goes mm -hmm. up into their olfactory bulb and down into their lungs and just helps support healthy lungs. Um, that's a great one. Um, probably works faster than the herbs, but the herbs are going to work pretty darn fast. Right. So both of those on hand, um, just to help support any horse through any through any kind of uh, challenging air quality days or in the winter time, if they're act seeming like they're, you know, a little bit labored in breathing. Um, we could talk a little bit about just horse respiratory health. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, when your horse is not in trouble and it's ha happy and healthy, watch it standing in its stall or its pasture and watch the flanks and, and count the respiratory the breaths that it takes in and out. The average adult horse takes anywhere between um, eight to 24, depending on the horse, the age, how healthy their lungs are. Um, and then if you get familiar with what's normal, then 
you'll notice when it's not normal. And also, you know, how much do their flanks go in and out? And when you have a horse who's struggling with, with getting air in and out, you'll see like their, their sides will go in so much and then they'll really like they're trying to force air out if they're having a hard time clearing their lungs. If they're having a hard time getting air in, you'll see their flanks just really suck up. Um, what are their, near, their nostrils doing? How much are they flaring just at a standstill? Get to know what your horse is normal because um, you can nip a lot of things in the butt just by knowing that. And listen, yeah, listen to their trachea, listen to their lungs, get a stethoscope, right? We, uh, years ago, I was at a three-day barn and we had a horse where we couldn't figure out why his, um, why he would stop halfway through the course. He just would randomly just stop at events. And so they finally put him on a treadmill and they actually stuck a camera down there and saw that his esophagus was not uh, functioning properly. Mm. And, um, you know, the flap wasn't uh, opening and closing the way it should. So what they figured out was that halfway through the course, he would almost black out. Wow. Because he wasn't getting enough oxygen. You know, and here you had this horse that was super fit and, you know, and he'd work through it and probably when we were conditioning, He'd work and then take a break and get it back again and work, take a break, get it back again. They did a surgery on his esophagus and he never stopped again. Poor little guy. I know. I know. There's <laughs> another thing to know about when you're exercising your horses. Um, when you work them, you know, have a good workout mm -hmm. and you are resting them you're walking, cooling them off, or you're done cooling them off and you're just resting, um, their, their respiratory rate should be anywhere from 80 to 120. Mm -hmm. um, but you should see that decrease back down to normal within 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the 30 minute time is gonna be, you know, is that horse really relaxed? Is he not moving? He's not nervous? Is it hot? If it's hot outside, they're gonna be breathing faster because their breath actually, with that big, huge capacity, actually works as a evaporating cooling system. So it helps cool their body down. If you have a pregnant horse or a horse who's just eaten and has a full belly, that's gonna change. Gabriel was here last week. Gabriel's here this week. Um, <laughs> my cat um <laughs> so those are gonna those are gonna affect the respiratory rate but it's a good thing to know that when you're working your horse and conditioning them you know what is their resting heart rate i mean respiratory rate afterwards and how quickly does that come down because if it's not coming down within a half an hour you guys that could be a precursor to heaves or roaring or COPD or some kind of condition that's starting either yeah. in the upper or lower respiratory system that also, you know, also could be in, indicative of a heart problem too. Yeah. Yeah. So those are, you know, get to know what's normal for your horse because like I said, that's a pretty big range, eight to mm -hmm. 24. That's a big mm -hmm. range. And it's the same with people too. We all have our own resting respiratory and heart rate. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing to know, you know, the reason when horses take in oxygen, that oxygen is feeding their blood and the blood is what's feeding the muscles. Mm -hmm. So, um, and they're expelling carbon monoxide or carbon. So when we are galloping our horses, I just read this today, I thought it was really cool, you may already know this, Kristen. But when you're galloping your horses, their respiratory rate actually goes to one breath per stride. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so when you're running them fast, they are not being able to take in as much air in that one breath per stride. 
So if it's gone, if you gallop them for too long, and I, it made me think about horses on the racetrack. And while you'll start seeing capillary breaks and they'll start bleeding out their nose or other areas, when they're at that one breath per stride and they're going super fast, they're more like, <laughs> and their nostrils are flaring up so they can get as much air in. But if you think about they're used to taking 64 to 79 liters and they're at that gallop for too long, they're actually depriving their blood of the oxygen needed and where that oxygen is going is to the constricted muscles mm -hmm. so it's feeding their muscles and when they're not getting enough oxygen into the blood they're depriving the muscles of the blood and oxygen and that's where you get muscle breakdown and you have a whole nother problem so i thought that was pretty interesting to know i didn't I mean, you, you know they're breathing faster, right. but right. I, I didn't really start thinking of the magnitude until you start thinking, okay, when they're exercising 64 to 79 liters of air per second, and then when you think about their gallop, how fast those feet are going, and each stride is a breath, it's like, mm -hmm. holy moly. It's amazing well, that they can run that fast. And, and, and it explains why it'd be damaging the, to them to run that hard and smoke, right? Oh, because yeah. that's why they can't clear their, their lungs every time. Yep. Right? Yep. They're only filling part of it. And they're filling it with debris, mm -hmm. you know, and soot and all that pollutant. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it's a fun little fact. And, you know, we don't often think about our horse's respiratory system. You know, you're seeing so many horses these days with COPD. I, uh, had a friend when I lived in Truckee, she had a big, um, Frisian that mm -hmm. spent, I'd say she was, when I met her, she was 17 years old and she had spent all of but four years in the Bay Area, in the Gilroy area, mm -hmm. where there's lots of fires. Mm -hmm. And she developed COPD. And so she wanted to bring her up to Truckee because they now lived in Truckee and she wanted to bring her to Truckee so that she could live out the rest of her life. And so we went down there and met with the vet and you know because moving a horse is another thing people to think about if you have a horse that has a heart or a uh, respiratory issue and you are going from lower elevation to higher elevation where the the air is thinner you can put your horse into a crisis you can put people into crisis or dogs into crisis any living any living animal so we had to really be careful moving that horse from Gilroy to Truckee and we had to keep pulling over and checking her respiratory because she did has a, have an asthmatic inhaler that we would use and son of a gun if we didn't run into a fire in Auburn God, of course. So we had to pull over because she really started making a lot of noise in that trailer and we had to pull over and give her her inhaler. But we couldn't sit and wait for too long because we were in the smoke. So we had to give her an inhaler, drive out of the smoke, pull over again and watch her, you know, watch her and give her an inhaler. That's when I learned about the cypress and the thyme and oregano. That's another one that's good for the, the upper respiratory. And so, yeah, she... Um, she had COPD from chronic exposure to smoke. So mm -hmm. um, just, just good stuff to know. Um, yeah, I, um, and it's something that people don't pay enough attention to. I know we've talked about it. You know, I'll see things online. You know, don't exercise your horses in this. But not everybody knows all the different situations, right? Yeah. Um, along the same lines, that's another reason why if you can help it, you don't want to close up your horse trailer all the way up. You want airflow. Right. Same thing goes, goes with your barns. The more airflow, the better. You know, I had somebody a couple years ago, they just didn't know. They're like, well, why don't you just close up your barn in the fire? I'm like, no, I need to let the air move. It's worse if it doesn't. Right. So airflow is your, air, air your friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
especially with those big lungs, you know, and then there's uh, the other things like if you have a horse who has heaves, you know, my, my little guy out here, when it starts getting really, really hot, and then the wind picks up a lot, that's when he'll start coughing. I actually have two of them out here that'll start coughing, and that's when I get my Hilton herbs and um, just start them for a week worth of every morning, give them a handful. If they're still kind of acting up in the evening, I give them another handful. Um, I will, they both, and this is an interesting thing because they will tell you, veterinarians will tell you that if you have a horse that has respiratory issues, shavings are not good for them. And if you have to use shavings, mist them down to break down the dust and to soak your hay because of the dust particles. Well, these two horses will literally take their hay and go over and they'll take big mouthfuls of it and go over and drop it in the water trough. And then they'll eat their hay out of the water trough. And you know, my husband gets so frustrated because it dirties the water trough. And you actually see how dirty the hay really is by the time they're done. Mm -hmm. But they will, go back and get so at this time of the year when I see one of them take a mouthful over and dump it in the water I will just start feeding them right next to their water trough and they will pick it up put it in there let it sit eat it pick up more and um, I just thought that was pretty fascinating that they they know, know that yeah they instinctually know that mm -hmm. so Dust um, is really hard on them, especially if you suspect that they might have a lung issue. Always, mm -hmm. always contact your veterinarian if you're all of a sudden noticing that your horse seems to be getting short of breath, um, doing things that they didn't used to get short of breath on, or if you can hear them, or if their nose is you know, really flaring and their sides are really going in and out when they haven't really been doing much you know call your vet and have them take a look at them have them help you yeah yeah there's another thing that lots of people use when they're doing a three-day venting is a flare strips it actually pulls this area open there is some science behind it uh, some people swear by it say that it really helps the horse intake more oxygen um, but you know i haven't had any personal experience with that but i know that some people really really think that it's great stuff and i know they use it on a lot of racehorses too so it's kind so, of the same theory that for the people that have that little strip they put over their nose yeah, yeah <laughs> it's a, yeah and it's like three or four strips in the shape of a uh, triangle that goes right up here and it helps pull the nostrils up to keep them open interesting yeah Nice. So a lot of people use that at the upper levels of eventing because, you know, they're going, they're going pretty fast. The um, other thing, I'm sorry. The other no, thing, you guys, that I would encourage you to do is get familiar with the color of your horse's gums. Yeah. If a horse, if any beans, not getting enough air, the, their gums are going to be pale or sometimes even have uh, we, we, in our veterinary practice, refer to it as kind of a blue jean tinge. You know, they're just kind of gray, not purple. You're really in trouble if they're purple, but they're just, they just yeah. have like a, That's really bad too. <laughs> like a gray, yeah, really white is not good either. Um, they just kind of have like a gray tinge to them. So do that capillary refill check. You know, lift up, and it's good to get your horse to let you lift up his lips anyway. But lift up that lip and press, you know, what color are the gums? Are they nice and moist? Press on them. Do they have that, uh, do they pale out and return back to normal color within three seconds? Those are all good ways to check if your horse hat is, you know, high, getting enough oxygen and um, isn't suffering from any kind of a anemia issue. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see with horses that have colic, you'll often see their gums kind of that pale or that bluey, murky looking color. And those are not, those are not, those are horses that are not oxygenate, oxygenating mm -hmm. properly. Um, 
Is there any, I mean, we, there's lots that we can talk about on this. You know, there's those, there's the, the most common things you see are heaves. What is heaves? It's the, uh, of, um, it's the bronchular airways that are inflamed. So they're not able to get enough air. Um, av av um, why am I struggling? Alve alveolio, um, I think is how you say it. It's the, it's the openings to their airways that go down into their bronchi. No, they're constricted. They're, yeah, they're inflamed, so they're constricted. You have what Kristen mentioned was roar, roars, roaring, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which you can hear. Heaves, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily hear. You, they'll sometimes sound like they're sucking through a straw, or the most common thing you'll see is coughing. Mm -hmm. Then there's the roars, which you can hear. Then there's COPD, which is basically equine asthma. Those are the most common things you'll see these days in horses. Um, there can be some, like Kristen said, there can be some things that make you think your horse is having a respiratory problem, but it's actually a heart problem. So good to have that annual exam. You know, we all like to cut corners and save money, but it's really not a bad idea so that your vet didn't know is familiar with your horse, you're familiar with your horse. Um, but most of all in that smoky time, you know, if you don't want to be out there, if you're out there and it's bothering you, for me, it makes it hard for me to breathe and I get a headache right away. Mm -hmm. If it's, if you don't want to be out in it, then don't make your horse exercise in it. Yep. Not good for you, not good for them. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. Um, anything else, Kristen? I think we've covered it all. So... Uh what I will do in the comments below is I will share the link to UC Davis's article that's got some really good information about what to do for your horses in, in the event of a fire um, to protect their respiratory. Awesome. Other, other than that, we didn't start with our usual. We're synergistic horsemen, yeah. and our purpose is to create educational um, videos and trainings for people to learn more about their horses. If you guys have anything you'd like us to talk about, please send us a message either on our page or send us a private message if you'd rather. We have a YouTube station, Synergistic Horsemanship. Check out our videos online and subscribe to us if you like what you see. And we are here every Thursday night at 6.15. And we appreciate all of you joining us. And um, we will be back next week. And I don't know, Kristen, do you have anything burning that you want to talk about next week? Or shall we say to be determined? I'd say, let's say to be determined for now. All righty. Okay, you guys, thanks for joining us. We will talk to you next week. That sounds good. We'll talk to you next week, guys. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.